Hello everyone. Welcome to developing a music player app session of uh, Python V Apps Conference 2023. I'm I'm Pritham and I'm a Python developer advocate at Embark Dero Technologies. In this session, let's build a music player application using the Delphi FMX Python V package. That looks like this after finishing it or after developing after finishing the development of the application. Delphi FMX Python V package has an has an excellent off-the-shelf support for playing media files, either audio or video. We have already uh, we have recently wrapped the media player component and made it available to the Python V package. There are there are some minimal prerequisites for our music player application. In order to play an audio file, the media player component of uh, Delphi FMX uh, Python V package needs an installed media codec pack. For that, we are providing, we, we, this is a link that you can utilize to download that. Uh, you can download it from the server one. It's a K-Lite codec pack, which contains uh, all the necessary codecs for you to uh, say this is actually you know the page that will land and uh, you can see that the basic variant of uh, contents uh, need for multimedia playback, right? You can download it from here. And then uh, the Delphi, we, we need uh, two Python packages, which are like the Delphi FMX, which we want to use to create our GUI application and the tiny pack package. If we just go to its readme, you can see that, for example, the tiny tags uh, uh, web page, the PyP project itself, if you see. So, uh, if you see this, okay, it's going to this Wi Fi. Yeah, Tiny Tag is a library for reading music metadata of most common audio files in pure Python, right? So, uh, as we are, as we are, uh, you know, playing the music files, you can we can utilize this Tiny Tag package to, you know, read the metadata of that. For example, if you see our, uh, uh, you know, application itself, you have this image, right? So which is embedded into the MP3 file, right? We would like to read that image data uh, using this tiny tag Python package. And we can even get the duration of the audio file or the artist name and can install both of them packages uh, here using the pip command as mentioned here. Let's go ahead and design our V application using the Delphi or RAS Studio IDA. Before going ahead, uh, you can see there's a Python V ebook bundle we are providing for you to download using this link or scan this QR code and uh, uh, get all the uh, Delphi FMX Python styles and Delphi VCL is a, another V offering package by package uh, we are offering for the Windows only uh, V application development. And uh, you have other uh, other others offerings like Delphi for Python exporter and Python FMX builder for the Android application development. So many multiple application examples also. So as part of the we app, we you know ebook bundle. Uh, let's go ahead. Be, uh, you can you can check out this because uh, uh, be, if you have the styles, then you can utilize that style and uh, apply to this application where you would see this is one of the styles in as part of that uh, uh, ebook bundle that we have provided. Let's first check our final app design ones. This is the final app design, right? Let's uh, have that in uh, uh, one of the, you know, see, this is a, this is a final app design file uh, images. Let's keep it aside so that we can utilize that to design our GUI application in between. And let me open the RAD Studio. As I said, the Delphi IDE to design this uh, applications at first. And then we can, you know, export that to the Python. With using the tool that we have mentioned, the Delphi for Python exporter, because uh, the Delphi itself has a uh, support for the you know GUI application development using this VZWIG GUI designer, which we will be showing here. Um, let me just open here a new project, which is a multi-device application because we are developing a cross-platform application which can run on any of the platforms like Windows, Linux, Mac OS, even an Android. There we go. So uh, as part of our design, we have it as a mobile screen, right? Means uh, because we are trying to make it, you know, 
uh, mobile friendly. So we just uh, you know squish or uh, we designer in a way that it is uh, it is uh, kind of a mobile screen friendly design. And then we just have a have a you know rectangle. There's some empty space over here and the button here, right? Let's just have a rectangle for that. I'm sorry, it's a rectangle animation. Just delete this first and uh, just get a rectangle from this palette and place it here and align it to the top because it's the top. There you go, have some spacing for us and then change its uh, name. Uh, the name if name is actually an instance variable name where using which we will access this rectangle as part of the code, right? So this will say is a top rectangle is a name we want to give for that. And uh, and then if you see, uh, that, that's for, for form itself. You know, we want to change the name. Like if you see the form, the, the ID, the you know, uh, form itself has a music player on the top, which is a caption, right? So caption is a music player, and we have a label here, which is a music and a button. So a label. Which t we just entered the where whatever the focused one and uh, now change the name of that. See the change the name and let's say music, uh, heading a top heading for example, and it gets the same text by default. But we can change that text to whatever we want. For example, the music that we have here, right? And then we have text settings. If we want to change that as it's uh, a little smaller, we can change its font settings to size, say for example, at 20, so let's, let's say 30. Yeah, I think that works. And you can just pan it so that it is uh, all visible without any, yes, there you go. Mm. And a button here, right? Uh, maybe it's a bit, it's a bolded, so we can even bold it. For example, in the text settings, um, font and uh, style, it's an it's a bold, it's bolded, and just take a um, this this top heading is part of the rectangle, so let's get it into the rectangle heading. So the top heading is into the rectangle, right? And as a parent, and let's say the button. button which is open audio files as part of the design right open audio files text of that and if you see the name of for that uh, uh, the name of that is uh, uh, button one at present we can change that name to be something else say audio open uh, open audio button yeah take a break We need to change the name of the audio file, uh, audio uh, open audio button, which is uh, open audio files, and it takes automatically that that same text over here, which is something we might want to change the text of that the text property, open audio files, right and. Uh, as far as placing of the button is concerned, it's fine. And now, if you see the design, we have some we have uh, uh, tabs over here, right? So for that, we will get the tab control component. Okay, where is this? Uh, for that, we will get the tab control property, and let's span it over to this complete tab. Uh, align it to this client complete client and it's spanned over all through and now we want to have multiple items here in it means multiple tabs in it like we have seen songs and now play for this application is concerned we can add multiple uh, 
multiple tabs in in a, in, a, in in number of different ways. Let us say we have this uh, at this tab control, we can right click and have an item editors, and we can have the same item editor over here, and we can add a tab item directly, like say here, and uh, you can get you can enter here also, right click and add a tab item here also. And let us say if you see for with the Android based style, you can see it like this, right? Um, and now the tab item one is songs. So the name itself is something, this is an instance variable name. It is not the display text. So the name, name to access that is, for example, the songs tab. And uh, the text for that is songs with the capitals S. And the text settings, the font, font size is a little bigger, for example, 25 or, or let's say 22, that is fine. And yeah, for this also, if we just take instead of tab item two, the text it's a now playing text, and the font size uh, is uh, twenty two as it's the same for that. And then now, if we check on the name of that, is uh, instead of tab item two, uh, let us say now playing. Tab, we go here, now playing tab and songs tab or there's a tab control one. We can change the tab controller name, instance variable name to tab control, say it like this, and there you go. So we have two tabs, two different views in a single form. That's an advantage of the tabs. Now, in as part of the songs, we have a list of a list of songs or list of audio files, which we can open by clicking on this uh, open audio files. So we can have a list box component here. So you just enter here and we can span it throughout the client because it's spanned over the client. Say so just uh, line and uh, client and it's all over here now. And in the now playing tab, we have a, a, a image of the MVC file and the label track bar buttons. So as we just can just take this image at first, image control component and place it here. Through here, right? And a label here. Let us see what's going on here. Uh, it's an image control. Image control's name is uh, audio embedded image, for example, name, right? Which is an instance variable name to access this image control component. And the label, we can just have empty, uh, empty label here, which will be filled with the song, our song name or the audio name itself. Let's say the name itself is, uh, uh, now playing audio and then to access that. But the text itself is something we can just give it an empty value. There you go. Mm -hmm. And audio embedded image and now playing audio. And then so the, the tab control, the top rectangle, top heading, and the open open audio file is under the top heading, which is this space as a parent. We just want to change it to the top rectangle as a parent. We change that here. And songs tab is done. And in the now playing tab, we still wanted to have a, a track bar here. So let's just get a track bar and place it under here. Let's it. This length and the buttons we want, right? Which is one here. And we want to change it to the play and pause, you know, uh, symbols which we can do it using this style lookup. If we just take our play tool button, right? And so here, if you see, right, the play tool button, and we can just uh, have that here and change its name to say, um,
change its name to play button for that matter. And its text is something unnecessary here, but still doesn't matter if you keep it also. So the text itself is uh, empty. We don't need any text for this button is concerned. Um, we can just keep a play, whatever it is, just leave it off. No problem. That's not an issue. And just uh, copy, control C and control V, paste here by just uh, changing its name from play button to the pause button as you want a pause button here. And then uh, uh, change its uh, style from play tool button to the pause tool button, right? That's it, there you go. We have the track bar name is track bar one. Instead of that, we can just change it to the, uh, let's say, Uh, song or audio track bar. It can, it can be anything, right? It's not, it may not be only a song. It can be just an audio, right? Anything. And then now what we have else? What we have else is uh, to open this audio files itself, uh, but using this button, we need to open it uh, uh, by using the open dialog component, which is uh, uh, which we which we also have a component like checking it over here in the palette T open dialog right using and its name let's say open audio open audio dialog let's say the name and. Uh, we might want to change. We might want to uh, select another option, which is uh, uh, at present we have off the high read only and off enable sizing options picked for the two. We want to have off off allow multi select also. Like if you want to change multiple, if you want to select multiple audio files at once to open open up, like in the songs here, as we can see in the design that we have multiple songs exist can exist here, right? So that's what instead of we can use that multi select option of that uh, open audio dialog and then uh, a timer over here we have a we have a track bar right so the track bars and uh, uh, and the media play the most, most important thing is the media player itself so the media player uh, we can have it here somewhere it's okay um and these are all actually um, non-visible components. So open audio dialog and this is like, for example, the image control is visible and the label is visible. The tab itself is visible, button itself is visible. Uh, the, the track bar is visible, but the media player or open audio dialog, of our open dialog component, these are non-visible components. Media player name, we can change it to the uh, media player. And uh, yeah, that's what. And now media player is finished and as, as we thought that we can we want to have a timer right a timer to track the time of the song itself of the audio file and then we have the timer and uh, change the name of the tiger uh, is to let's say the timer itself and then now we want to link these buttons to some action, as we said, to open this open audio dialog. So let's for that we can if you check go to the events events uh, section of that specific uh, object, then we have multiple events for that specific component. On of it is an on click, which which on clicking of this button that specific action or specific event takes place we can we can open we can set up that event by double clicking over here or even double by double clicking over here let us say if you double click here a specific uh, procedure which is actually equivalent to the method in the python and uh, for that to be exported without uh, an issue we need to place a comment which is if it's an empty it, it uh, takes that it's nothing is there and uh, doesn't get exported so now uh, this specific thing is finished and then now we can't have we, we can actually ask for the delphi developer they will write the logic to 
open that uh, uh, using that open audio dialog open audio file dialog uh, the t dialog open dialog uh, so in over here that logic they will write in the in the delphi uh, you know language but our concern is to export this event method and write the logic in python so then the media player itself uh, doesn't have any event uh, songs is a list box, right? So, ah, okay. In the now playing, we have two other buttons, isn't it? So, which are play and pause buttons. For that, we want events. When we press the, when we click on the play, it should play, and when we click on the pause, it should pause. So, if we double click here, uh, there you go. And if we double click on the pause here, then there you go. We just have a comment, and then. These three are finished, and we, we we want to have a we want to have a when this uh, track bar is changed its position that uh, the media file that the audio file should uh, shift its uh, you know playing playings to that specific time. So we want to we can check on this uh, on change event here and double click here and uh, on changing that track bar. You can perform some action, which is actually the audio file should reach to that specific timing where you drag this uh, track bar, and then uh, we can have timer, right? The timer is something that we can link in between the track bar and the music play and the media's uh, uh, time itself. So we can have a on timer event here, which you can double click here or even there. Um, there you go, and uh, there's a uh, one more. Uh, yeah, the songs itself is concerned. The list box is there. We have the list box, right? Oh, it's, so the name is we didn't change to anything, it's list box one only, which we can change it to say the songs list box or audio list box. That's the name to access this list box. The event for this is something is also having an on change event. One means when when we add new, when we add uh you know here the uh the, the specific uh, list of the songs or audio files like it here then when we change from one when we change from one audio to other audio when we click on that then it goes to the new tab you are now playing tab and plays that specific file right so that's an unchange event for the list box which we can have and comment i think uh, this is something uh we have mostly everything we have here uh, as far as the as far as the design is concerned, and then we can just now go ahead and run it using the target platform Windows 32 or Windows 64 or even Android. We can select, but we need to connect to the mobile and uh, Android device and uh, uh, and your default have that device displayed here. There you go. This uh, this is how it looks. Uh, this music is uh, we can have it an empty. Um, you know, filling instead of a, a solid filling here. Let us say fill to none, and there you go. That's it. We can take the style at now, which using this using this. So the style is uh, we have this this style right. So that's what. And there you go. Mostly everything. We have it all. Yeah, perfect. Uh, we can just now export. We when we go to the tools over here, you have an export to Python. I have here uh, option which you will not be having. For that, before that, we have a Delphi for Python exporter which you can get it from the Get It Package Manager over here. If you press over here, when you click over there, you can just search here uh, Delphi for Python. Yeah, the exporter. Uh, we, we will get an install or install button here to click and uh, you can install and then the ID will get restarted. So before doing that, you need to save this first. Save this project, save project as, and uh, you can save it anywhere, but I have uh, uh, the Spygat Sessions the music player. And okay, before going and saving and cancel, I want to change this form one itself. Uh, I have changed its uh, caption earlier, but the form one itself is uh, the name of the class. 
So I want to change that formal name of the class to something else. Let's say the name to access that class is uh, music player window, let's say, right? Music player window. And there you go. I think uh, all of the uh, components are meaningful names they have now, right? There's nothing like a, uh, like, random names for them instance names yeah there you go we can just save the project as oh yeah right we just go to the documents and i get sessions music player it is an extension with the dot pass which is the pascal file the delphi files are, are actually the pascal files so music player dot pass and uh, the project itself is stored with a deep project delphi project file you can save it using this name let's say music player project okay and there you go it saved this music this change from project one to this some other name right and uh, now let me just uh, export this using the python there's two options to export which is one is export entire current project and export selected forms in this uh, exported select forms whatever the form which is presently selected which is the music player dot pass because if you see this is the fmx dot fmx file which is actually the form file uh, and uh, we can have the complete uh, entire project to be exported by just uh, having some other you know uh, let us say if you want you can actually add some other you know unit file and or form multi device form which is a, a multi window based applications if you want to have uh, we have a single window application here let us say if you if you want to sign up for example then in a sign up sign up will open another form right so something like that about multi window forms you can have the all of them exported at once using this uh, expired entire current project uh, you know button let us uh, use this to export our uh, single form. It's, we can use the same thing to even export the single form based applications also. Uh, let us give the application title as a music player, which is of not much big significance and store it in the Python folder of it, uh, in the music player, right? And you can store the form file as a text or even the binary. The form file is the where all the design data will get stored. Uh, of this specific uh, Wii application. You can store it as a binary to actually, when you want to ship your application to someone else, you can have that, uh, uh, you know, extra, extra, uh, extra efforts to, like extra security to, for them to just not copy directly using this text file. Then you can just export it. And there you go. The project successfully got exported. And if you just, uh, see this uh, project there you go okay this uh, projects we want in the music player in the python this is actually the delphi project itself is stored over here and in the python you got stored this uh, files okay mm, these are the old ones we can just ignore and uh, yeah there you go and now let me just open that in the PyScriptor IDE, the files. Okay, let me just uh, refresh it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the music player project is uh, something, uh, you know, uh, let me just show let me just tell you what happens happening here when we exported that uh the music player is dot uh, py file gets stored because the uh we stored that uh, pascal file as music player and that is what the form file or the form data that we have right and uh, not the form data the forms uh, you know uh, instance variables and everything their event methods and all linked over here uh, in this file and the music player project itself is the project file 
which is a main file main main function is stored you know stored in this specific python file if you when you if you would have exported using the single form then everything this main file is main logic is also will be part of the same file so then now uh, you, we have imported this music player window class music player window is what the forms name here so we have just uh, yeah, imported that class into this uh, file and uh, uh, we have set that as a main form and have want to show that and show that uh, when we run it. So um, why we are setting it as a main form? If, if you just think of it, then what's the logic here behind this is when you have the multiple windows based applications, as I said before, uh, we want to have one form as a main form, which will get opened as we run the application and other windows are something we can open up through some of the other logics. Like when you click on something or something, uh, when whatever it might be, you can have a logic. So let's run it first and uh, uh, have this, uh, you know, oh, application opened up. See, this is the application which we have um, as far as our, you know, design export at present. We can have, we can do well, but let's uh, uh, stick with this for now. And then let us see, uh, let us, we can, some, we can now start adding the logic. If you see that uh, uh, buttons, right? Uh, when you run this application, open audio files button and the play button, pause button, all of that doesn't have any functionality behind it now. Let's say, let's say this button, right? This open audio files click when that action doesn't have any logic, it's just a pass. And uh, audio list box change, or, or for example, the play button itself doesn't have any logic in it. So we want to add that logic over here as part of our application. Uh, logic. We have got all the design uh, exported using that Delphi for Python exporter tool that we have. But uh, now we need to add the logic. We can add it now, the file. Say, um, uh, right. Uh, yeah. First, we can add the logic to add the files. That's one. That's the first important thing to do, right? Open or open audio files. Click is what something we can add at starting, and uh, and then we can add some files and see how it uh, you know happens. So for that, we will utilize the open audio dialog uh, you know component uh, for our uh, you know logic. Say. Uh, the logic is as it goes, like for example, uh, self dot open audio. Mm. Oh. Open audio dialog dot execute. is what we can use to actually open that dialog. And uh, we can now just add that uh, list of selected audio files to, um, you know, let's say mp3 files list can be say open mp3 um, not mp3 audio files open audio um, dialog dot files whatever the files which we you know select and convert them all to a list format a list uh, all all to a list and store that list in this right and then now we can actually uh, we can actually store the uh, song paths, let us say, right? Because uh, that might be useful to play them, that files, right? Um, whatever may be the songs list is stored uh, here, right? So let us say oh, um, the song list of all the songs. Let's say list box, uh, name of it can be list box song or song left, let's say, find song. Parts, right? Uh, why I stored this MP3 files list maybe is because we might want to at present you know, store them, select the MP3 files itself. We can generalize to audio files list, that one. 
instead of that. You can currently have this uh, list songs path as empty and uh, get that paths from this uh, list. Uh, and we have the song paths. And also, uh, the list box itself contains a list box items, actually. OK. Um, which can be empty at present. And then, now what we can do is the mp3 files list is we got, right? So we can get that. We can iterate through that, for example, mp3 files list. For for mp3 file in in mp3 files list, we can just uh, now get the mp3 file path which we want to add to this list. Then right, and the path. So first of all, get that list using. Um, or else, first of all, let's get the mp3 file uh, name itself, okay, which we can want to display over here as a you know name, right? So mp3 file name can be can be gone. We can get it using the um, mp3 file path at first. So um, song pads uh, mp3 files list we have, right? So that list itself, uh, I think, will contain the paths. Or else, let us just uh, check out that ones. For example, we can just comment this out. And what does it contain? Let's just, just, let's just check mp3 files list, right? We just print it. And uh, let us see. As we add that. What are the list displayed over there in the console? We can just check. So now we can open this audio files. And yeah, in the music, let us say we just add some list, right? Yeah, ah, okay. We already have paths here, right? So we can just uh, use this uh, paths to get the names, okay, directly instead. Uh, so that uh, uh, we can actually use that name directly to be you know assigned to that uh, <clears throat> you know the name over here in this right so yeah i think uh, that goes uh, let us go ahead and add that logic here this is the parts and uh, if we just uncomment this to mp3 file mp3 file path individual file is a path here already we got the path here and always dot uh, we just get the mp3 files name now let us say um, it is at the last dot dot mp3 before dot mp3 in the path this is at the last right this is what the name of that yes and we want to get that we can get that using this book text of the os.path. Say split text is here, right? Split extension of the path name. So split text can be used along with the uh, base name, right? Os.path, whatever the path that we have, and uh, base name. Did we input OS? Yeah, we put it OS, right? That's why we're getting the suggestions. So the base name of the complete path. Complete path is the mp3 file path. mp3 file path. So before going to ahead, I think we can even first of all you know, append it to the you know, paths, right? Self list box song paths dot append the path. To that All right there you go and uh, there we have the name of that which we can display over here the design and uh, and then the path itself is appended for our further utilization because we are storing it as an object instance you know variable 
the self dot list whatever it is right so we can utilize that later and now we have that name and name is actually here it is a splitting text but after we split the text we want the first element of that which is the first mp3 is the next one right there you go and then now let us define a list box item for this uh, uh whatever we have in the songs we want the list box itself we can display we can utilize uh, we can define a list box itself list box item let us say the name is lil lb list box lb item list box item song name or audio name let us say right or your name and uh, list box item is actually um, yeah as we put it we will have it yeah list box item and uh, that will have List box items parent is actually the songs uh, tab now, right? The, the songs tab is yeah, self dot songs tab is the parent for that. Or or sorry, sorry, the items is the item is the the parent will be the list box itself instead. So list box name here is audio list box. Right. And with that, we have the parent, and uh, so the owner of that. And then, now we will define some the properties of that list box. Say the parent itself first of all. Audio list. Box is a parent, and uh, what do you have? Let's say define. Let's define some height because we, as part of the design, we have this some some kind of uh, you know height for this. It's not like immediately after that, right? So for that, we can have a height variable defined to some certain height. Let us say a forty. That might be working well for us. And also, uh, it should have the text of that. The text itself, for the text only, we have got the name now uh, to display in that list box item. It's the LB item uh, or the, the MP3 file name itself, right? So MP3 file name. And uh, I think uh, we are OK with the list box item settings. And we have appended this path also already and now we let's uh, append that uh, you know um, uh, list box song name i song like this lb item audio name list box item to the list box itself right so list box itself uh, items let's say uh -huh, okay okay we can actually i use this uh, uh, we have defined the list box items here so that uh, uh, this item itself we can append to that list so that we can utilize that afterwards if we want to because uh, after exiting out of this function we will lose this list box item so instead of losing that list box item let's have it in the instance variable which is list box items list so let's append it to that say self dot list box items dot append mm, what do we need to append the little b item or your name itself right so list box item or your name itself so i think uh, this is okay for the open audio files click event let us just go ahead and run it now and check the adding of the songs open audio files and as we just uh, open yes we have now when we click on this file i think we should open this now playing tab and directly we should play the song right so that's the next uh, 
you know, uh, action that we want to take, right? Okay. So for that, what's the function we defined? List box item change, something like that, right? So all your list box change is what uh, uh, we have uh, defined uh, for this specific action. So let us now go ahead and implement the logic for that. And say, for example, we have uh, uh, the selected LB list box item first, right? Um, so that when selected only, it gets changed, right? So selected LB item, sorry. Selected LB item can be actually, um, we, the list box itself has a property called as selected. So if you go, uh, okay, before going ahead, I want to say you how to actually know uh, all of this. Uh, we actually have uh, recent, in, the, in our latest release, we have rolled out our documentation uh, for our Python package, this Delphi FMX. We can just go ahead here and the Delphi FMX documentation uh, and just uh, search for the, uh, for example, list box itself, right? And uh, there you go, the list box and list box can have all of these properties, like these attributes. So if it returns whatever, like uh, for example, the selected is what I'm just telling you. You can just check out which can be used for your specific use case, right? So um, multi-select is one of the things and uh, selected, right? Returns the item that is currently selected. So that list box item, whatever we displayed, that list box item will get returned when you actually uh, re use that selected property of the list box. The list box itself is uh, uh, defined uh, using our audio list box uh, variable. Audio list box dot that is selected returns to this returns an item which we have added here when we click on the when we open that media files and uh, we got it returned. So now what we want to have is uh, uh, when we select that immediately, the tab needs to be shifted to the next one, right? Let us say uh, the top, this so is the top tab. I think the control, this is the tab control, right? Uh, the tab control, the tab, there is a, if you just go ahead and check on this uh, tab control, And uh, and here, if you see the properties, you will have this uh, uh, tab index attribute, one of the attributes. Tab index, specify the index of the active tab, right? So the, we have only two tabs, which might be, it's a zero index based uh, language, right? So zero will be the first songs tab and the no playing tab is just one index. So the tab index, now we are changing the tab controls tab index to one so it will automatically shift to that uh, you know, tab right so we can just uh, uh, run this uh, logic itself to check out if you want to let us say it is, it is just getting shifted to that new now playing tab or not you know uh, let us say the songs and audio files selected for example and play and if you just click on this and it came to the new play, the no playing tab, right? Successfully. If we just uh, change it, and if we just change it, it's going here, right? And it's just change going here. That's perfect. So, whatever this tab index is getting successfully implemented. Uh, actually, it is if you see, if you have seen, it's just like a flash immediately. We have a uh, transitions also to shift from that to this in a smooth transitions. But for that, uh, there's a T tab transition uh, type needs to be wrapped from the Delphi to the Python, which we didn't wrap yet. I have just identified that uh, we will wrap it in as you know. We will add that to our roadmap to wrap. Right, mm. and then now we will, uh, if we if the selected LB item, whatever is that, if we have something in that, let us say, then is not equals to let me say. Okay. Then mm, now because we 
whatever we selected should have something. And uh, that's something I think it is it is obvious actually that need not be you know done that this specific when we selected only it is changed already, right? So that is not needed. So MP3 file path. MP3 file path is what we need to access now, right? To actually uh, play that file, play that file now. In, in using this MP3 file path equals to, uh, we have this uh, uh, list box song paths, which, which we have saved from the previous function, right? And uh, we have this, Selected LV item, right? And we have select we have even the selected list box items also, right? So uh, uh, we can get that uh, from its uh, you know index actually, right? Index of uh, index of the selected you know items, selected list box item. So, so whatever the selected item that we have, so that we can use. Okay, not from um, index of the selected. Okay, okay. First of all, we need to get the index of that, right? There is this some list box items, items, and get the index of that specific item, whichever we have selected. First of all. So we got that items index now. From that index, we can use um, we can get the path itself. Self dot list box song paths. That specific, you know, you know, path. Right, and uh, we have that path now, and we can use that to now just uh, uh, play the song, right? Using our uh, uh, what do you say, this uh, media player component that we have. So, for that, uh, let us say we can just enable the uh, pause button and disable the play button because as it, as it starts to play, uh, if we still have the play button enabled, that doesn't make any sense, right? So we can just uh, do, uh, implement that logic also. Play button, let us say. Play button can, if pop pause button is anyway already activated mode, enabled mode. So uh, we can just leave it like that, but uh, um, we have an enabled property for the buttons. Uh, you can even, you can again check that using this uh, documentation and uh, enabled play button is uh, false now. That's it. So it gets disabled because we set the enable to false. And uh, we now just play play the song or the audio file using the media player by set, by just uh, giving its uh, uh, file name directly using the path that we got, right? And, uh, uh, and then we can just play it. Using the play function. Let us see. This is the very basic implementation, and uh, it should work. By if we just get the stuff, and there you go. Tag uh, is not implemented. Uh, pause button is not implemented. It's just uh, the logic will just be that I know, right? Just gonna stay and there and watch me. If we change the file, it should change that. And uh, now we need to uh, implement this uh, other stuff, other logics now. For for that, uh, we thought of actually as part of our design. If you see, we have this uh, in the now playing tab. We have this image also, and we we need to update this. Uh, uh, what do you say? The name also, right? Uh, the name also we can update by. Let us let us implement that logic. For example, 
that name is uh, now playing tag and uh, we have open audio files song step audio embedded image we will we will implement and uh, what is that name of that um, let us go ahead and check out once the name of this now playing audio now playing audio now playing audio right yeah that's it so okay it's in the uh, what is this is in this one right we are implementing this project so before playing after enable this implement this uh, now playing audio equals to now playing audio sub text equals to the name itself right so for the name itself i think uh, we can get the selected lb item and uh, we can get the text from that okay because uh, the lb items uh, 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 text is actually the file name itself it's not the path so we can get the text of that and we can assign it over here and then now uh, we also want to assign change we, we also want to give the you know what you say the image right so we for that uh, we want to use the tiny tag uh, um, no library so library for the tiny tags library um, it can be done using by getting if we go to the it's a pipe page you can have can see here uh, which this is what the way we will get the image data the binary stream of the image data so we can utilize the same this is a path we need to give here and the image needs to be set to true so let's go and uh, do that give i need tag and uh, sorry there's a get method right as you have seen right here get and uh, we anyway have that path already for this which is mp3 file path b3 file path and image equals to true and there you have the tag and for that tag we need to get the image data right tag dot get image image data equals to tag dot image get image and you get the image and we use the image control image control uh, uh, you know image control components to get the image running image over there so let us say we need to ask we need to first of all make sure that it should have an image you know uh, data because uh, some files mp3 files might not have an audio image because uh, mp3 from it, it's not necessary that every mp3 file gets embedded with an image right so uh, let us uh, assign this uh, is, uh, is to have this uh, pre-check otherwise it gets we will get an error right so we we'll, we have a, another component called as byte stream okay a, 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 a class byte stream in the uh, delphi fmx and we can get this uh, byte stream we can get that byte stream using this uh, um, bytes image data bytes it's actually image data is in a binary format so it's in a bytes format so we will get that and then we will utilize this byte stream you know um, byte stream instantiation whatever it is the variable to uh, load this uh, uh, data image, load this byte stream into that you know, image control component and what do we have that image control component uh, the image control component here is audio embedded image i think so yeah audio embedded image yeah. audio embedded image and uh, it has something called as bitmap you know property or yeah attribute uh, bitmap property which can be loaded from stream a method in that and that stream is the bs right there you go 
and uh, if there is nothing there is no image data in it we can just uh, uh, keep that uh, uh, what do you say a bitmap as an empty as a non non right mp3 uh, not mp3 audio embedded image dot bitmap is no that's that's done that's done nice there you have it and what else do we want to do it uh, in this uh, specific uh, when the file or the audio changes um, we might want to implement the track bar also right so song track bar also we might want to implement uh, we can assign the uh, assign the maximum value of that uh, track bar in this let us say self dot uh, audio track bar yeah exactly audio track bar dot maximum maximum value can be uh, given from the complete duration of the file we can get that duration either from the tiny tag mp3s uh, you know metadata audio metadata or you can get it from the media player itself let's say you have the duration you know attribute which returns the uh, time in the 10 nanoseconds format uh, which you can check out in the uh, documentation and there we have set with, anyway the minimum value is zero so we can set the maximum and there i think uh, we have this uh, logic running there it's okay and now uh, let us go ahead and uh, um, see the track bar change or before going track bar change yeah track bar change logic we can implement now i think it's a good time to track bar change implementation uh, uh, yeah uh, what do we have what do we need to do we just need to set the um, first of all track bar needs to be linked with the timer right before so that uh, the time of that uh, audio file can be changed with respect to the track bar right so let's go ahead and uh, implement the timer first let us say uh, the timer the track bar we can we, we have the track bar a tag component in the track bar if you just go ahead and uh, see the track bar right it's a tag component type if you want to utilize here track attribute tag attribute mm -hmm. yeah stores a native integral Int integral value of the uh, as a part of the component right so uh, it is actually um, it's a kind of a place uh, it's, it's a kind of a value to you know say that uh, if, if that tag, we can utilize that tag value to actually achieve certain logic let's say uh, if the tag is something then only we can then we need to implement something of related to that track bar if the tag is not if something else it can be any integral value integral value so let us use that uh, um, track bar what is that track bar name audio track bar right yeah audio track bar dot tag let's assign it to one at, at first and then uh, now we will change the initial stage let it, let it, assign, it, let it assign it to one and we can change it to uh, change its uh, first of all uh, value by song like uh, audio track bars the value we can assign it to the media players current time okay uh, we have a current time means whatever the songs or the audio's current time that value will be assigned to this uh, track bar at present right and then we will again assign the track audio track bars uh, tag to means when we want to change the current time then it will be it will be first assigned as one and then it will change to the zero right so uh, then again we can change that to zero so that we can utilize this tag afterwards to actually uh, in this audio track bar change to you know implement that logic of uh, when you change when you drag that uh, in track bar we can implement some logic so let's say for example if uh, uh, self talk audio Track bar dot tag equals to zero. Let us say 
because we are saying that to zero of, at the last rate after we set after we have given that value to the current time then now what we want to do is actually when we change that then we need to uh, then we uh, need to actually um, the, when we drag that value in the track bar, that value need to be assigned to the current time of the media player in a, in a reverse way. Uh, when when we uh, the track bar first of all gets updated with the current time as uh, on uh, continuously, and uh, uh, but the but if we change the track bar, that that needs to be assigned to the current time of the media player, so that the player the media gets played from that specific time. Let us say media player dot current time um, can be um, got from the get the, from the audio uh, track bar value whatever it is right so let's go ahead and we uh, pause and play buttons are not implemented yet that's the only two remaining so let's go ahead and uh, run this and check and if you see let's change uh, let's let's just uh, get all of that. Okay, bytes, byte stream. Okay, okay, it's not byte stream. It's bytes stream. Okay, so that's why it is uh, showing the error here. So we can go ahead and change that. Mm, before that, let's go ahead and uh, change it to the bytes stream. Right. Save it here and then now run it. Okay, and uh, when you open these files, there you have the image data and you have this file name. And now let's implement this pause and play buttons. First of all, let's implement the pause button. Because uh, the okay, uh, now the pause button when we press the pause, the media player should be the media itself should get you no know, stop right. So before getting stopped, uh, maybe we can just enable the play button right. Let us say the play button uh, enabled can be set to true right, and then we uh, yeah as we as we clicked on the pause button, uh, the pause button itself. Will get disabled, isn't it? So that um, it's in the current currently that will be in the paused state, right? So, and then now the song itself, the audio itself, can get will get stopped. As we have the stop, as we have the play method, we have the stop also. And um, now let us implement the same similarly the logic for the play button. And uh, when we click on the play button, uh, the play button itself will get, you know, enabled to false. But but the pause button will get activated at that point of time, right? When you click on click on the play button, right? And then the song or the audio will continue playing from there right so i think uh, this is what the whole logic behind uh, everything here and uh, let's just uh, uh, go ahead and run it and and before running it i can i think we can just directly add the style right there are actually two ways of adding styles um, we could we could have already we could have added a style when we are designing the um, you know GUI itself, or we can add it here. So it's just a very before adding the style, we need to have that styles styles uh, uh, from whatever. Like if you have the, you should have that style by downloading the ebook, and uh, we have given the link to that right here. 
this ebook uh, bundle and when you download that this will be this will be the folder that you will be downloading and in that we have delphi fmx for python styles we are utilizing we are using the delphi fmx and delphi for if you want to develop the gui application for windows only a platform then you have the delphi vcl based uh, styles and uh, we can have all of the styles right let us just grab everything uh, take this uh, remove this text file and all the dot style files that we have we just copy it here and in the media player inside the python we can have a new folder to say for example uh, styles right and inside that we can just paste everything right so style file so type is the style file and uh, there you go We can just uh, use the, we can just define that uh, style manager, say using the um, self dot, uh, we have a style manager class, style manager, and then uh, you, you can define it using um, set style from file directly. Let us say self dot sm dot set style from file and just have the uh, say let us say we just need to have the path of that right so path can be like we can get the current uh, directory name and uh, then um, no, no no maybe we can actually always don't uh, path dot join we can get the current working directory first join both um, and um, the style file name right say um, current working directory is the python folder right the file whatever this python file exists and uh, style is style that we that i used to you know display it actually is a transparent dot style right and uh, yeah i think uh, that's a wrap most probably let us go ahead it should be running okay so start style style manager is not existing what is okay it's not self sorry it's actually directly a class right i made a mistake over there uh-huh and uh Error. The system cannot find the path specified. Is it a Python songs? Okay, instead of songs, it's not songs, it's styles, right? Right, there you go. And uh, save it. Yes, success. I think we are okay with this. Uh, it looks even more nice than the design that we made, right? Uh, let us just add all the files right and with your files and uh, This is a music player application you can use, create by yourself using the Delphi FMX for Python module. And uh, we the same code which we have used here, we can do it for, we can uh, run it as an Android application too. But the thing, uh, but the catch over here is that uh, uh, we, we are utilizing, we are, we are having Python FMX Builder as an offering for the Android uh, uh, platform. But uh, Python FMX Builder currently doesn't support uh, the for the Android, we currently don't really support the third party packages yet. Okay, the tiny tag is a third party package which we have which we don't have it yet. 
and also uh, the la latest released media player is not yet available as part of the python fmx builder which we will be releasing a, uh, in a recent uh, you know in very short time and uh, keep an eye on this application we will be developing a full fledged uh, uh, you know music player application for multi platform for windows linux mac os and android all of them and uh, there you go yeah thank you all